you're very welcome to um, Facebook Live here, uh, an extension, I suppose, to our Terrorist Talk program. And uh, with the same panel as last year, in or last week even, in studio, uh, we believe Brosnan. And as I said last week about Liam, he sits in that corner, keep an eye on the rest of the guys on the panel. Great view from there. Of course, John Kennedy, uh, Dinny Long. And to my left is Jimmy Dean. And thanks a million, lads, for staying on with us here uh, tonight on Terrace Talk. And uh, I suppose the one thing came through in our program tonight, we must have an amazing amount of listeners on the Terrace Talk program because I have sheets upon sheets. These are the ones that's just here. And to my right as well, I have comments. And it just tells you how important uh, Kerry football is to the general public and our listeners here on Terrace Talk. And it might get, I suppose, the ball rolling. Uh, as far as um, our our post program, uh, more analysis, I suppose, and, and we probably look at what's going to happen with Kerry in the coming months, stroke year, uh, to get ready for next year's um, championship. Uh, Tim, Dublin started twenty year old yesterday, and uh, left McManaman, Connolly, and O'Gara on the bench. Kerry would have started the older fellas, and left the twenty year olds on the bench. Too many fellas not playing enough football. Um, John Kennedy, uh, is that a true statement of Kerry that we tend we did give guys, uh, you know, a run in the league in the league final? I suppose we're delighted to see the likes of the Gavin Crowleys, uh, Ronan Shanahan, uh, just to mention two uh, players involved. But we didn't carry him into championship. We didn't, Tim. Which is it's you know I suppose a lot of it comes maybe from what happened in the training field, Tim. You know, most managers will 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 say whether it is a saying or whether it is true you pick the team from what happens inside in training we are not privy to what happens in there in A and B games uh, obviously you pick the team and for them um, and you know some of the younger guys the likes of Ron and Shannon in particular I suppose who was very impressive throughout the league you know he didn't keep his place for the championship which is was it because maybe of the county championship you know he hadn't the best of games maybe in uh, tonight against St. Cairns Thomas Hickey he gave him a lot of trouble very similar to our own full back line in, in, in against Mayo. A lot of space, a lot of good ball going in. You know, the Adrian Spillans, these guys. But look, now's the time, I think. The future will have to be playing these fellas, you know. and, and the, But, the John, is, is there enough? We're, look, we're approaching our fourth All Ireland mm -hmm. minor final in a row. Uh, there was a famine before that. It was mm -hmm. going back to Liam Brassman's time in 1994. Mm -hmm. But suddenly, we must have talent. You don't win uh, an All Ireland with a minor level, with, with an average team, but. Should there be a lot more, like, should we say there should be two or three coming from all those years, even to four or five years ago for teams that went to the business and lost out? We don't seem to, they don't mm. seem to be coming through. No, Tim, they don't seem for one reason or another, you know, but a lot of these guys go to America for the summer, a lot of fellas, you know, a lot of, with potential go away for, for two or three months. Um, sometimes, Tim, you know, Liam and myself are involved with a Kerry under 21 team, hammered down in Cork. And I remember coming home on the bus that night, we were actually talking, would many of them go on? I think it was 13 of those one senior all yeah. You know, out of, a, out of a team that was hammered. So it doesn't follow that because you win, they'll come through. They're only 18. You <coughs> know, uh, next year they'll be 21, maybe 22. I think Jimmy said a while ago, you know, 25 or 6, you're at your peak in, in, in condition and in fitness and in football. And, you know, they have plenty of time ahead of them. And I think maybe sometimes they can be put in at the deep end too soon. But it's, it's, it's a balancing act, really. What do you do? Uh, Dublin have done it with Conor Callan. They've done it with Paul Mannion. You know, they've done it with Kieran Kilkenny, and they are successful. Liam Brosnan, um, Sean O'Shea, he was a name that was inside, and uh, not many whispers out of the Kerry camp, but a lot of people felt it was one of those games against Mayo. Let's unleash this guy, because he's an outstanding prospect. He's in with the Kerry panel, so if you're in with the Kerry panel, you're not there to gain experience, you should be able to come on and play. Yeah, Tim. Should he, should he and Fitz Morris have played... Sean O'Shea he should have but I, not not last week I think he should have played him earlier in the championship and the same with the Tom Sullivans and these guys you know um, we've seen we've, we've all seen Sean, Sean O'Shea play he's playing very well with his club so I presume and there was a few whispers coming out of training that he was going very well inside in training as well and you know you'll always get these stories coming out and coming in and you know that kind of but these are guys that we we need no, it's not. We can't just cast them aside and just say, "Look, you'll you'll be all right at 25, 26, 27." No, we need these guys to be stepping up to the plate now, and that's why I said about your question about David Fitzmaurice is he staying on? 
I think it's very important now. Whoever takes the, the, the management, either they're going to stay with Eamon Fitzmaurice. Is Eamon going to stay for a year? He, that's his year contract. Is he going to bring in these young fellas? We just made a quick list there of guys like you have, say, from the first minor team that won it. I'll just go through a few of them here. It was Shane Ryan, Brian Begley, Tom Sullivan, Andrew Barry, Matthew Flaherty, Jason Foley, Gavin White. Now you had Darren Braston, you had Mike Breen, Dan O'Brien, Cahill Lung and Brian O'Shanna Cahan. Now that's all of the first and they're all still playing good football with their clubs. Um, second you have Michael Burns, Killian Spillane, Tom, uh, Thomas Tomas Shea who had a great campaign with the Kerry Juniors this year, it was outstanding. Now the likes of Liam Carey who had a good old campaign with Beaufort, you know, we've, been, we've been watching him. And then you have the Conor Keane, who I, I thought played very well this year in the league when he, when he came on. And I thought this guy was going to be another prot, uh, potent forward that we need. And I know I was a forward myself, that's why I keep pushing forwards. But I think the weekend proved that we have to get back to six forwards. We can't be going back defending and drawing teams at us. Let's do the carry way, as you said to me earlier. Let's go out and play football the way Dublin played at the weekend. Uh, Dinny Long. Um Liam mentioned that there are a number of players coming through, and I, I watch, you know, some people may not rate the junior competition, but it's still a competition where fringe players get involved. Kerry have been very successful over the last uh, number of years in the junior championship, and we won in All-Ireland this year. I watch two guy. well, one guy I'll mention him first is, is Pat Kilkenny. Now, he was in and out of the Kerry panel over the last couple of years, but when I see players over the last couple of games with Kerry, you'd say that this guy mightn't look out of place on the panel. How do we engage those players again? Like, I look at that Kerry team, there's some of them at the other side of 30, and great servants to the cause. If these guys are coming through to us, and if we have to give chance to these guys, other guys have to make way. Do you see Kerry players retiring? I do, Tim, and uh, I think that you will have quite a number of players. Do you think Kieran Donaghy will leave? Uh, I would imagine that he would. Uh, you know, uh, Kieran is 24. Uh, you know, he's been there for 10 or 11 years or whatever it is. Uh, can he give uh, the commitment? Can Does he want to give the commitment? Obviously, playing for Kerry, you know, is, is cruelly important to him. He, he loves it and he loves the, you know, the glamour of, of playing in Crop Park and the glamour of playing in Killarney or, or wherever. Uh, it's a huge commitment. Can he keep giving it? I, I, I honestly don't know. My honest opinion that this probably is his last year, and I suppose the sad thing from uh, my point of view, uh, he's been a great servant to Kerry and a great servant to the Stacks. It was a pity to see him walking off the pitch after getting a red card, but you know the referee had to do it. He left himself open, uh, even though he was being uh, intimidated by Ed Noche. I thought Ed Noche was, you know, I thought it was nasty what he did. And Jimmy was just saying, if it was Jimmy or if it was me or Liam or anybody in the room, you would have done the same thing. You would react. Uh, I suppose you know he he. He's been one of Kerry's better players all year. Uh, he's been tremendous, and he's you know, thirty four years of age. Uh, he's had a great year this year. He you know he's playing basketball all the all the the winter, but he came out fresh and was mad for action and gave great performances right through. The, the Another grey servant now, unfortunately for Kerry, at the business end, he's got injured. Dunica Walsh as well, massive servant to Kerry. What a great miner, what a great man in the All Irelands we've won in recent uh, times. Uh, will Dunica find it hard? All these guys are like we, we might say that the system is professional uh, inside in the Kerry setup, but these guys have to work as well. They have to go Correct. to their nine to five jobs or whatever every day of the week. The likes of the Dunicos and those guys, when you move on in a year, you probably could settle down on that. It must be very difficult for those players. Brian Sheehan is a, another player. Yeah. You know, at the other side of 30, uh, Killian Young is approaching it. I'm not trying to retire these guys tonight, but if we're saying these players have to come through, you need a balance. But you could see that there are probably a few Kerry players will um, say goodbye to this senior centre. Yeah, and you know, you have players as well, like the, those four players that you already mentioned. You know, will they put in all the hard hours just to be an impact player for 10 minutes maybe or something like that you know all island medals are not important you know playing maybe that small role that they would be playing down the road so obviously uh, maybe sometimes uh, Kerry might be a bit too loyal to fellas and they're saying you know we can't <coughs> drop him or whatever because he's given great service you know is that difficult for him if it's Morris because he, he played, with some, played with some of them he played with some of them but I think it's like everything uh, the game has moved on 
the game has become more professional there's no place anymore for sentiment and I think w whether it's Eamon Fitzmaurice and the present management or a new management Kerry will have to start rebuilding and uh, unfortunately there seems to be a, quite a big rebuilding job in my opinion uh, I'm only giving my view uh, I think that Kerry probably need an injection of seven or eight maybe or even nine new players very good Dinny and of course those comments coming through to us on Facebook as well uh, Aileen O'Sullivan I hope the star would stay on for another year it would be great um, to have his leadership on the young lads and uh, Nora, Noreen um, Carney Finnerty hearing you loud and clear in London and thanks very much to our overseas callers and one or two comments as well um, from New York uh, here and again another caller in London hearing us loud and clear uh, Jimmy Deanahan <coughs> You said on our live Terrace Talk programme, nobody could bench press like yourself <laughs> tonight, and strength and conditioning was the huge <laughs> part of it. The lads have just mentioned it around the table there, Jimmy, that a number of young players, we have to try and bring you know, young players on to Kerry's up. Are Kerry prepared to sacrifice maybe an All Ireland for a couple of years just to get the balance right and get the players involved to the level that's needed to win an All Ireland? No, I don't think they're prepared to make that sacrifice. <laughs> so already look we're in preparation for next year's championship but that's why the county championship now is at quarter final stage is very important and that's why players should really take the county championship games very seriously and the selectors as well should really watch performances in the county championship personally i don't think enough of emphasis is put on the county championship in kerry uh, why jimmy uh, well because there's so much emphasis on the county team and the, the All Ireland uh, Senior Championship, uh, even more than. D the in league. your time, in, in the seventies <coughs> and early eighties, did was there a huge emphasis on the county championship? If a guy played well in the county championship, was he called into the the squad the following year? Because uh, normally the business end of this was played when they're not carry. They were nearly in every other All Ireland. Uh, did they well, did they take place? I remember from the that time. If somebody performed well in the county championship final, uh, they were automatically brought in to the Kerry team and uh, always in the league. The league started in October, and always in the league that time, uh, you had people being brought in from the county championship if they were playing well in the county championship, if they were shown for them. And personally, I know the county championship was very important to us that time because you were on a winning Kerry team and uh, you had a chance of being captain of that team if, you won, if your team won the county championship. But uh, certainly there was huge emphasis and even in training, uh, we would be in re we'd refer to the county championship. And there was that rivalry in training of uh, Tim Kennelly and myself, the Rangers, versus the five or six stacks lads on the panel. And there was that tension even there when it would be coming up the county championship game. So I'm, I'm just saying that I think the, the Kerry County Championship now should, I think, uh, be seen as a, a focal point for watching new talent. But I, I do agree with all the speakers now is a chance to go out and look at players and, and get them in, draft them into the panel. But I feel as well that all players who are serious in Kerry at this moment of time, uh, who want to get on the Kerry team, uh, should be looking at their fitness and also their skill levels as well. I'll say one thing, uh, Jim Gavin, I remember he was in the Air Corps and I remember speaking to him some years ago uh, outside in Baldonnell and he was just training the under 21 at that time and we were making a point that Dublin were the fittest team in the country, but they couldn't score. And uh, more or less, whether he said it or I said it, that all their drills should finish in a score. But certainly, whatever Jim Gavin did, uh, they're the best no. kickers now with the yeah. ball in the country. Like They had a very high success rate yesterday, completion rate. They kicked some great scores. Yes, yeah, certainly, uh, certainly the team of the moment. Uh, I might get to uh, comments that came through on, on our main show. Um, maybe we should give Munster title a break and go the scenic route next year. More games, not sitting around uh, waiting and waiting around to see who we'll meet next. And that comes from Anna. Why can't any of the Kerry team take a 50-yard free? Uh, what kicks? Who takes the kicks for their club? Actually, we spoke about that on the show itself. Uh, Mayo, the better team on the day. Kerry have become a bad team overnight. We need Donaghy to stay, Tom Parsons, mm -hmm. lucky to stay on the pitch. Listen to Radio Kerry replay Saturday night uh, on the return from uh, 
Crow Park and brilliant from Ambrose and Gary. Uh, any mention of David Goff's dreadful performance yesterday, three Mayo players attacked three Kerry players from the throwing, knocked them down to the ground. In f uh, in over 40 years of following Kerry, I've never seen the likes. I think they set a pattern where Goff ignored multiple fouls on Kerry players and many of the Kerry players were left bewildered. That's something we mentioned as well and we mentioned Donny Buckley several times uh, tonight, uh, Liam Brosnan. One man I met yesterday on my or on Saturday on the way up to the game, Brendan O'Sullivan. I met him out the road at a, 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 a petrol station and we were chatting, seeing what was going on and what we thought of the way the deal was going. He's a man that Kerry have to keep a, a close look at now, of course, because this guy is a nothing coming star. His physique alone, there's a need for big men, the big men like Brendan O'Sullivan now, Liam Brosnan. Because that's one thing we thought yesterday, that the, or on Saturday, the physical attributes of Kerry was not the same as what Mayo were. Yeah, I suppose the, the big man is, is one thing, Tim, but you need athleticism. You, know, you, you need guys that can run, and I think Dublin are proving that. And Brendan O'Sullivan can run. And Brendan O'Sullivan can run, and we ran about the county championship there. Like, oh, who was our player of the year last year in the county championship? Adrian Spillane. And where was it this year? You know, yeah. We haven't seen Adrian Spillane. Like, you know, so is, 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 are they not getting a chance? Or, you know, see, we're not privy to see what's going on inside the A, B, a versus B games. So we, we can't see who's going well or who's not going well. You know, so it's, um, it's, it's, going to, it's going to be, it's going to be make a very interesting National League next year. And I would think that any young fella like Jimmy said out there now, that now's the time if you think you can be a carry footballer to put your head down and, and, and do a bit of work. Because there is going to be chances. Fellas are going to be get chances. Um, but it's up to them whether they take it or not. Mm -hmm. You know, we have like we're we hopefully we'll go for the four in a row this year in the minors. The minor game is going to be a tough one, but we we're going to have four minor all Ireland contesting teams to pick from. Like that's a, that's a great starting point, but unfortunately, if we don't start, you know, we're going to start losing them. You know, John mentioned America; they are start to slip away. We can see guys they're slipping away. You know, their farm is dipping with their clubs because they're gone out of the minor scene. They're they're doing the twenty ones, is even though. Jack has them on programs and stuff like that, but that's only 20 or 30 of them. There's another 20 or 30 fellas there as well that are kind of slipping away into in, you know. So it's it's a big, it's, it's it's kind of more of a headache now for the county board. You know, how can we mind, mind those players? The and mind and players. minding the players, one player we're all speaking about, and hopefully in a couple of weeks' time, we'll be singing his praises when he's gone up the Hogan stand to accept that minor All Ireland trophy. Um, David Clifford. Is David Clifford going to be playing next year with Kerry, John Kennedy? Well, certainly, Tim. You know, he's he's only eighteen, but I certainly would be looking at him. There's no doubt about that. He's a big guy. He's he's huge potential. I, I think we said here last week, Tim, that you know these players come around. We've been very lucky in Kerry. We've had Mikey Sheehy, we've had Morris Fitzgerald, we've had Colin Cooper. I would put David Clifford in that league. I think he's exceptional. He's an exceptional talent. He's he's one we should mind, and we're hoping he'll stay around. Kerry County Board have to push the boat out of this one. They have to do everything quite possible, and you know the dogs in the street know out there that. We're all afraid that this man will go to Australia That's to right play right Australian right. rules yeah. because we've we've lost Mark O'Connor already and yeah. the whole county and the whole country at that because this guy has a profile now outside of Kerry as well. We yeah. cannot afford to lose such a marquee player. There's no doubt him. He's you know in, in the stand the last day after the minor game like you know neutral people. They were they were admiring his talents and speaking about him and he's a marketing product not alone for Kerry. But for the GA in general, I think he's. You can't afford to lose, or the GA can't afford to lose these players. Mark O'Connor was a huge loss, you know, to the decision he made, and a fantastic talent also. Equally, David Clifford. We'll be hoping he'll stay, um, you know. And if he does, I've no doubt he'll be in. He'll be involved in the panel. But Tim, you know, Lee mentioned about Adrian Spillane and these guys coming through. There's, it's, it's a huge step up from club or county championship football to championship football with Kerry with the Kerry seniors. Even in my time, there were some very good players, and people asked where were they. It's a transition, and it's a learning process, and it's a kind of a, you know, it's a real shocker. The difference in the standards in training that time, not in my now. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a lifestyle change really, and some players it takes some time to adapt, and you know they go backwards before they come forward. And I think you know when when they have a year or two of that training behind them, you'll see the benefit of it because it certainly has a big impact on their performances. And sometimes we can see them playing a county championship and in club football, their the standards have dropped. They're not playing. People say they're gone back. Their form is gone. Well, it it could be from the training inside in Killarney or Tralee because you know this is grueling stuff. It's tough. It's competitive and it's intensive. And you know different players react differently to it. 
John, have we abandoned our the Kerry way? I call it the Kerry way. Um, the direct football. Uh, is it because of other teams have we've suffered from? I suppose against Tyrone in or three or five or eight. Uh, our man between that that we suffered because of the northern plight and they went totally ultra defensive and didn't let skillful players alike so the David Cliffords of this world uh, express themselves have we become too focused on what's happening outside of Kerry I, no, Tim, maybe there's a certain moment but I think you have to adapt to what's there now you know and I mean we are not going to be allowed to play or any team for that matter is not going to be allowed to express themselves and play the lovely football we saw it a number of years ago I think Jimmy alluded to earlier on that you know Colin Cooper was being marked by Philly McMahon he was back in our own half back line you know the, the management would be in question why was he back there well he had to follow the man he was on you know so that's that's the way football has evolved positions count for little anymore but why do Dublin players then John <coughs> that you know they see they hold their position like when you know Bernard Brogan he didn't um, come on the pitch yesterday I take in the Dublin Tyrone game but when Dublin were at their best over the last couple of years Bernard Brogan when Mark O'Shea was marking him he want of a better word he kept his own zone yeah he did and we're saying then that <coughs> Colin Cooper has to track Philly McMahon up, up the field yeah you're, but, it's but a fair point him and, and you know Bernard Brogan he's a guy that did why can't carry do it well it's, it's I suppose it's, it's horses for course in different games you know and, but I think that Bernard Brogan was a player that stayed always close to the goals regardless who was on him he was a finisher inside Cullen was a guy that actually he, he, in, even with Dr Crokes he tended to come out around the middle of the field winning possession popping it off because he was a great player to deliver you know in that particular game he was back in the back line quite a lot he's not going to score back there but, but was, wouldn't any manager <coughs> look at you you beat uh, Mickey Hart when Tyrone were at the top no different to Stephen Rochford if you see and even during Jack O'Connor's time there's I, I suppose the likes of the Deckno Sullivans there, one of the best ball carriers in the game. He was playing at times behind his own half back line when we were playing Tyrone. Isn't that the dream of the opposition manager then? The likes of Deckno Sullivan, you're not going to be any threat there. The point I'm making are we t so sucked in by the way other teams play that we abandoned our probably best trait is this more skillful with both feet, you, a, man, a ball travels faster than man. And that we've abandoned all the skills of our game. How many foot passes were we carry over the weekend? Yeah, that's true, Tim. It's it's. But we you have to give credit to the opposition in different games, Tim. We weren't allowed at the weekend. We were we were put under. But pressure. we went defensive, John. Oh, we did. We did in that particular we game. But but you see, I think the management's in in even at club level now. When you're playing in championship in particular, you look at the opposition, and you look at how you're going to stop their better players. You're not going to allow them to express themselves. And I think that's the way the game has gone. It's about negativing the, the good players on the other team. And obviously the opposition manager and, and management team will try to do the same. So that's why we have a lot of hand passing around the middle of the field, very few kick passes, and that's why scores can be at a premium in some games. Denis Long, yeah, he wanted to come in yeah, on that. Yeah, I think there, just to carry on on the point that John is making there, that again, if you look at, at, at the football over the last number of years, you know, I think that the the Tyrones and the Armas and you know brought in a game that was totally alien to the way we uh, came up playing football but they did it for a reason and I, the reason I think was that they looked at, at Kerry and they said okay there's no point in taking Kerry on in one to one so come up with a system where Kerry won't have an advantage Kerry had a huge advantage when the game was one to one and number 15 was ma number two was marking number 15 and 13 was marking four because invariably Kerry would win 10 and 11 positions around the field so it was you know almost certain that they'd win matches teams like Tyrone who were, and, and Armagh and these teams came along and said we're putting in the same time we're putting making the same sacrifices but we have no chance of winning unless we come up with a different system they have come up with a different system it has definitely taken from Kerry's uh, type of football that Kerry were playing and you asked the question why don't Kerry remain with the football the kicking the great kicking the great players that they had kicking they they mix the kicking with the hand pass and all that kind of thing the reason in my opinion that they can't do it they don't have enough quality players to do it when Kerry come up with a, another great bunch of players top class players Kerry will be able to dictate again how they want the game played but at the moment Kerry are, are not in a position to dictate to those teams who are playing a different game 
and are, are nullifying the few good players that Kelly have to score. That's my reading of it. Of course, those comments coming through to us and keep them coming. Uh, Jeremiah Murphy, referees, uh, won uh, a lot of All Ireland's for Kerry. Uh, present Kerry style and team selection is too conservative and ponderous. Uh, let the players play their natural attacking style. And that comes from Peter O'Donnell. Uh, Patrick Ruddy, uh, gr uh, great was it to be uh, alive on Saturday in Crow Park, to be a male man uh, was very heaven. And uh, Matt Lean, uh, time for more attack-minded set up uh, to be employed. Uh, too many negative tactics driven uh, by fear in recent times. Players' natural creativity is stifled presently. And thanks a million for all those comments and keep it on. And uh, well, those viewers, it's increasing by the minute. Um, Jimmy Dean, you've seen it evolve, and I kept harping on about it. I, I suppose we don't like to lose our tradition. And like Dinny says there, that we may not have the players of the ability to send that long foot pass in but are we not training to do it are we inside in Killarney and we're spend most of the time in stamina and we mentioned the gym tonight are we playing enough ball the one thing you, you look at a Kerry Minor Jimmy when he comes into training he can he can kick with both feet he can make space for himself but is there certain players, are those players coming through at senior level and because the game has evolved, we're not allowing them to express themselves? Maybe there's some issue there, but <coughs> at the same time, eh, when you refer to Kerry adopting their game, I remember going back again to the 70s, uh, Dublin beat Kerry in 1976, and I remember Nico DeWire saying to us, look, if we have to pass the ball all the ways up uh, from the full back line up to the other end of the field, we'll do it the beat Dublin and we kind of uh, adopted our game to a certain extent we changed our game and we went on and won you know seven all Ireland. Uh, Miko uh, we based on that uh, response in Dublin I remember then even back in the early 60s Down brought in a new style of game and Kerry adopted again so uh, Kerry can adopt their game to meet the challenges of opposition there's no doubt about that but it comes from within it's adopting our own game in order to be better than the game but that the others are doing in games of marriage have we gone too much to the other side no I, I i don't think so really um but i do feel look there's a how many players nowadays do you say look up at the post like the man across the way from you he'd be playing on the 40 or wing forward look <coughs> up at the post like pat spillane used to do the bomber he was even doing it for a man that a lot of people said was manufactured more than because of his physique but in 84 85 he was out coming out the field 40 yards out looked up at the post planted up i i watched sean o'shea this man that we're all talking about above against derry was it last year and they went with a blanket defense the man kicked was it five or six points he looked up at the post so it eliminated uh, uh, this so-called bulletproof yeah. defense of course, all i'm saying uh, is uh, yeah. how often do we see it now Jimmy? well dublin did it yesterday and, uh, but didn't and what we always as good better than Dublin to do yeah. this. this so is the, the one thing I'd say is that definitely we don't have long range kickers to the extent. But are we practicing it? Well, maybe I don't know how they're practicing. Uh, in Brussels, what they're doing in in training. Practice at Tim, all right, yeah, yeah. But it's it, that comes down to the setup of the management team and the set of the way you set up our team. You go back to our team that we set up Saturday, right? You had you had uh, Jonathan Lyon, Johnny Buckley, and Stephen O'Brien. Now Stephen O'Brien is not. Um, Stephen O'Brien is more of a goal getter for you. He'll put the head down, he'll go, he's your natural half forward. Johnny Buckley's a worker, and Jonathan Lyon's a defender. You know, so automatically they're not gonna kick they're not gonna kick points from 40, 50 yards out. Whereas if you put Shawnee Shea in there, with Stephen O'Brien and James O'Donoghue, automatically you're you're reversing the whole thinking. But do we have it's to a half forward lined in that wants to score? But are we work trying to work that ball to that full forward line? We're trying to feed off Donahue, get ball inside to uh, Paul Ganey and James O'Donoghue, whereas I'm saying there's less scores coming for the If you sell a dummy to a fellow wing back or whatever, if you have that little bit of space, left and right, and look up at the post and ping it, that should be part of our play. That should be part of a half forward, and it was all our job when we were half forwards. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. if we went below the mid midfielders back in our day, you were told to get back up. You know, but the game has revolved. But unfortunately, we're kind of revolving. But my point, I think it's revolving now again, Tim. But I think we have to revolve a bit quicker. We have, like we. The, and we're Dublin, talking about Dublin that. proved it yesterday. Dublin proved yeah. it yesterday. It's that you can kick a point from 40 yards. Yeah, and, and, and football. Football. you you played the Dublin played their six forwards and their six backs yesterday, mm -hmm. and I do think that if we played our six backs and six forwards against Mayo, 
we'd been down in the final. I don't know would we beat Dublin, but we would have got over the other week. There is one point though, that's that the fear of not scoring. Mm -hmm. And then there's match analysis afterwards and people are identified who give away the ball or who are shelling the posts and who didn't score. Yeah. Uh, so people are afraid to have a go now. But th that fear that shouldn't be there, Jimmy. That you know, there's guys that are afraid to put a ball to foot in case I'm kicking it down. I'm playing right half forward. I'm John Kennedy's in the corner. I'm to ping him with a pass. You're afraid with a foot pass that John won't that it won't reach its destination. And Jimmy Dean him runs off my shoulder. I'll hand pass. There's players that go through a game now without kicking the ball. Yeah, and uh, because the hand pass is more accurate and the chances are you hold possession but that's the way the game is going and people should take chances they should lock the high ball in now and again and take that chance and that should be accepted but apparently a player that will do that and give away possession is, is maligned too many stats Dini yeah. are we saying there's a lot more has got with heart and endeavour and hunger just like Mayo said like I, I am sure there's a fear in the Kerry camp with players that I don't want when I'm showing the stats the following day that these are the amount of passes I put astray, how many possessions I had. You're trying they're trying to offload to the fellow with a hand pass beside them rather than the vision of kicking it kicking it forward. Yeah, and I think if you look back to the lead up to yesterday's game between Tyrone and Dublin, everybody that I saw and talked to and read in the press and all that, mm. they were saying this wonderful setup that Mickey Hart came up with and how good it was and Dublin would find it hard to break it down and you know it was, it was it's continuously going the very same as it was in 2014 when Kerry played Donegal right both proved to be an absolute disaster Kerry won the All-Ireland in 2014 Dublin absolutely destroyed Tyrone at that game yesterday mm -hmm. now that's not taking from Mickey Hart he's won three All-Irelands with, with Tyrone and in fairness to him he had, you know he built from a team from a county that were nowhere in football and he had a great team through and won three or four three all islands you know I think the three probably were at, at Kerry's expense but what I'm saying is that if you have the footballers football is the name of the game and I think it would be a great rule if if it was brought into GA that you'd have to kick the ball rather than maybe a loud one hand pass but the, the kicking is going out of the game because players are coached to not give kick. away the ball and it's not kick and not kick so that's I don't like it and there's an awful lot of people out there right. that don't like it that's uh, so much a pity because we were always renowned for our skill every from even Jimmy Dean and out uh, were good on the ball and sending that pass well, forward I, I, think, I think Tim if you go back a couple of years ago mm. they were on television and there was fellas commentating on matches on television now and Tomas Shea would go up the wing and he'd kick the ball over the bar from 40 yards and they'd turn to one another now you wouldn't see him but they'd say Jesus how did he back do that but you're a good footballer he'll kick the ball over the bar if he practices it yeah. whether he's playing corner back or full back and we're definitely abandoned the skill um, with those comments coming through to us um, it's great to have a show like Terrace Talk that the fans can text their comments into the panel uh, not every county has this weekly outlet and well done from the uh, Ballymac listener thanks very much for that and uh, why do you think um, Kerry had to play sweeper uh, for the last match and that comes from John and Cork and those Facebook comments um, Seamus Duffy, I think the GA uh, should present the Sam Maguire to Dublin next Sunday after the hurling. Sure, Mayo have no chance. People say that Dublin will win the next five All Irelands, but sure, we might go up for the weekend anyway. And uh, come on, Mayo at the bottom of that. Jerry O'Sullivan, uh, time for the county uh, to set up, stop holding good young players for A versus B games. We're in both sets of uh, players county training one night a week let them play with their clubs the likes of Shawnee not being left play with the under tw in the under 21 final disgrace 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 and that comes from Jerry O'Sullivan uh, Shawnee O'Connor uh, put this panel uh, put this to the panel uh, one all Ireland in eight years say this out loud it will shock you uh, change is needed fast uh, be a few years before Sam is home and hopefully not um, Lads, I'm going to ask you, I mentioned, you mentioned um, Kieran Donny, and I'm sure for our listeners out there on Facebook tonight, uh, they'll want to know, is there other players that will walk? 
uh, John Kennedy. And I mentioned, uh, no, no disrespect to the players, but the players I mentioned were at the other side of 30. But as Alan Dillon says, or Alan Dillon at 34 years of age, no different to Kieran Donaghy, the two most outstanding players on either side uh, this year. Other players will, will go on. By the way, mentioning Donny Buckley, Alan Dillon came out during the week and said Donny Buckley was the best coach he ever had. And that's, I'm speaking about the Castle Island man now because there's a carry input on Mayo. But asking you, John, will other players leave the carry panel? Yeah, it remains to be seen, Tim. You know, I suppose that's up to each. Uh, the way Eamon has adopted it, the approach he's adopted in previous years, he left it up to the players himself, you know, rather than calling it. I think quite a number of the lads have a lot of mileage up. It depends on how the body is really. Can they go through another year? The one thing I'd say is that we need new blood, but you need experience. And to get the balance right is very important. These guys around the dressing room are very positive. You know, look at the look at the effect Kieran Dan he had on the team, you know, from, from, from the champ from the championship started. You know, he he had a calming influence, he was a leader on the field. You need those. I think we lack leaders and we've lost a lot of them over the last number of years, the O'Shea's, Aidan Mahoney. Paul Gallivan, Colm Cooper. These that's the spine of any that's team. That's the spine of any team. And we, we shouldn't forget that because these are guys that have they have, they have been legends of the game. They have they have led us on days when you need them. They are the guys you'd look to. And I think you need experience in the dressing room. You need the balance right. And I'd be hoping that, you know, these guys let them around the county championship, see how the how the winter takes them and see what kind of the, the shape is in next year. You look at Kieran Danny. We've spoken a lot about him over the last number of weeks and months. He played no league football. You know, he played basketball. He, he he had the discipline to condition himself and to come back in the shape he came back in and to have the impact he had. So why can't others do that? You know, and I presume that the, the management when they sit down, they will they will afford an opportunity for everybody. They'll have a programme and, and see who's ready to go when, when the time is right. Liam Broston, <coughs> you might get away with it in a far we, we know that uh, how Andy Moore and we mentioned he spends a lot of time in the gym and he's really having a massive year. He's nailed on uh, to win an all star. Um, you might get away with the forward line but you know in the backs and the half back line it's all about legs you can't not too many guys over 30 now can play in those positions can they? No not the way the game has gone and to be honest him, even up front it's you'll struggle now but if I was the carry manager I would be knocking at Kieran's door and maybe trying to keep him for another 12 months because you need the likes of Kieran after the year he's after having like Kieran is, is going to be nominated for an all star he had a fantastic fantastic year like he's he'd be an awful loss to go because he did carry it. If we didn't care and Donny this year, I don't know what we'd be talking here about. But um, the defensively, right? There's a cup. There's I, I don't think we're going to lose too many defenders. Like what are you looking at? You're looking at Killian Young is probably and Shane Enright probably the two oldest back there. Our half back line are are, are, are fairly. You're looking go to the midfield. You probably uh, Maher will he, will he stay or go? He'll be be decision. You come up to the forward line. You're looking. You obviously you're looking at Kieran and Dunica. You go to the bench. You have Darren, Darren and Brian Sheehan. You know, so that's the the handful. But should, five or six should the there. should the minors of the last couple of years be putting these guys on the pressure? You look. Pressure, yeah. I think, yeah. and we've and ma it's be we've massed the midfield over the last number of years. But for two guys to work so well, presently yeah. Barry O'Mahony and you know, Connor from the Gael. Yeah. I think they're the best prospects I've seen in years as as midfielders. As midfielders yeah. The way they can read the game, they're athletes. And like if you were 18 or 19, Seamus yeah. Mining came into the Kerry team at what? 18 and a half. Yeah. The Gooch came in at 18 and a half. We said Shawnee, Shea. If you're good enough, if you're, good enough, you're old enough. Yeah, I don't think, wait, like I know when the boys were saying you get your peak at 24 and 25, but you need to be in there to get but the experience. But you're Conor Callaghan. And and, and, Conor Callaghan yesterday. Yeah, you, you need, you'd like, I'm saying, you need to be in there to get your experience to 18, 19, 20 year olds. I think actually, no, if you're not a Kerry footballer by 21, you're not going to make it. So now you're, you're just not going to you're not going to in the last three years because you're going to slip away to America or you're going, or you're going to, to disappear like that so it's um, no and, and the other point the final point on, on reti retiring guys I don't think it's up to the guys themselves either I think the management have to step up and say guys look thanks to now you've been fantastic uh, ambassadors and, and, and work like that but we're going to use like it's very easy for a 35 36 year old to stay for another year <laughs> you stay and you're you like everyone loves that everyone loves to stay as well yeah. Jimmy Dean and uh, final question question to you on that is it time to go youth well certainly there will have to be changes <coughs> but it's very hard to tell anyone uh, to hang up their boots would Mick O'Dwyer do it 
uh, in his day. He, he never did it. I suppose he get that as uh, gentle hints. <laughs> I suppose he had <laughs> subtle ways of doing it. Um, but did he uh, tell you? He, no, he didn't. Down an actually, he asked me to come back on the team in '84. Best bench press, and he asked he him to come <laughs> back. No, he did. He asked me. He called me, and he wanted me to go in and play in the uh, try games. But uh, I had my mind made up that time. I changed, I suppose, my <laughs> careers, and uh, just it was impossible to be a teacher, to be a footballer, and to be in politics. And I had to give up too. So I gave up teaching, and I gave up football. But uh, Miko, in all fairness, him, he called me and he said, Jim, you know, you're still playing good and in county championship football and North Kerry championship football uh, you, know, you could still make the panel or maybe make the team but uh, I decided myself that I just couldn't do it Do players uh, check in with themselves? <coughs> I think they do and players have to be honest with themselves too and it's a big decision to make uh, to say you could be feeling well but uh, it's a big decision to say that you're no longer good enough to play with Kerry and you might have had a very good career so players have to be very honest with themselves whoever that would be and uh, make that decision, uh, I think, themselves, even more than being told it. So it's up to players themselves, really, to make that decision and put their county first, probably, before themselves. Fine, I, I'll go round the table once more before we <laughs> sign off. And I, I want, of course, I want to thank uh, for all those comments uh, coming through to us um, tonight on Facebook and likewise the numerous comments came through the show. I'm going to ask you, lads, you're telling me that Eamon Fitzmaurice looks like he's staying and I suppose there's an expectancy in Kerry every year to win in All-Ireland. It's going to be a very direct question. If Eamon Fitzmaurice stays, Denny Long, and I suppose the inception of youth and holding on to the few of the <coughs> experienced guys, will Kerry win in All-Ireland in 2018? I don't think so. Uh, and I think that if Eamon stays on and if, or if somebody new comes in, I think that Kerry will have to rebuild. I think they will have to be patient. I think that maybe the idea of bringing somebody new in to replace Eamon if he decided to go in his management may not be the best thing in the world either because there'd be pressure on him to <coughs> produce an All-Ireland winning team immediately. I don't think that's possible. I think just if you look, and I go to a pile of games, if you look at Kerry players at the moment, carry football at the moment, they have hundreds of players, hundreds of good footballers, but what they're looking for is the fella to go above that scale. There aren't enough of them there. There are plenty of footballers here in Tralee, there are plenty of footballers in North Kerry, South Kerry, West Kerry, East Kerry, Mid Kerry, but the thing is, they're all much of a much. Can they get the players that they always could come out with? Can they get enough of them? That's the big challenge for whoever stays or whoever goes. John Kennedy, quickly to you. If Eamon Fitzmaurice decided this minute, I've had mine enough and it's time for freshness, is there names out there that people would be queuing up? It's the hottest seat in football. I don't care if the Dubs won 101 all Irelands, but the prestige job is to be manager of the kingdom. Give me names. Denny Long, at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's no, worth we'll never go for you know, it's hard, to, <laughs> it's hard to name names, because, but look, any guy, it's a huge honour to manage any Kerry team, but particularly the Kerry senior team, it's, it's, it's the number one job in football, even, even outside of Dublin, because there's an expectancy in Kerry every year, and you know, maybe some people are in the management team at present, the likes of maybe Morris okay. Fitzgerald, I'm not privy or I'm not sure would he be interested, you know, maybe Jack O'Connor would put his name in the head again. Who knows, maybe Peter Keane, he's had tremendous success at minor level. But there's always guys... There's another side to it as well, John, that you no know, different to the players having jobs, the managers have jobs, and it's not, I suppose, a luxury to some people. Having it's so, There's so many time constraints involved in management that, I suppose, and I'm not saying that uh, teaching is an easy job, because the man, Ian Vismars, we speak to, he used to travel to the Dingle Peninsula for his job on a daily basis, but maybe hours like that, it suits a lot better. So... A lot depends on what sort of a career you have as well. There's, there's, there's no doubt about it. And I mean, look, when, when, when we're all at home maybe watching a match in Sky Sports during the winter and, and the fire on, you know, these guys are in a the gym, they're on the pitch. It's, it's a six or seven days a week job now. It's a huge commitment. It's a, it's a massive effort. And, you know, at the end of the day, there's only one team want to win the All-Ireland. And, you know, that's, that's where we're at. And, and I've no doubt that, you know, Eamon and his guys, they've done massive work. 
you know, if they walk away, they're doing a good job. Like Dini said, maybe with limited resources. We're in transition. Let's not forget that. Every team goes through it. And when you look forward to next year, we'll be in the last four. And when you're in the last four, anything can happen. We're only kicking a, a two ball away from Mayo. I think Mayo are going to have a big say. I think they could be all Ireland champions in three weeks' time. If so that means we're not that far off. If things go our way, are we going to win in All Ireland in 2018? We'll be in the mix, Tim. You know, it's hard to say we'll win it now, but we'll be in the mix. And you know, we'll are be you doubtful? I'm, 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 I'm more confident of doing well next year than I was of doing well last week. So if I, you're I more confident you, of doing <laughs> better I said it to you last week. I thought this was an exceptional Mayo team. It's very hard to beat hunger and hurt. So if, we're, if you're saying you're more confident for next year, that means that we're going to get a step closer to winning, Sam. I, we've I, got an all final next year? I think we have a lot of exciting talent, Tim. I'd be hoping, like Liam, that the likes of Kieran would, would stay on for another year. You need that experience. And I think that you, you'll learn as long as you go along. Look at the Mayo management. They dropped their keeper last year. They'll learn from it. I think I think Kerry will learn from the mistakes they made. And, you know, you have to make a mistake to learn. And I think, Tim, before I go, before I finish, look, we, I suppose football lost one of the great players yesterday from the inter-county scene, Sean Kavanagh. He's been a fantastic footballer. He won three all Isles with Tyrone. He was a real class act. And, you know, these guys are a loss to the GA, and we wish him well in his retirement. An easy question for you, Liam. Thanks, Tim. Um, Mayo obviously beat us and beat us well. The way players have been playing for Kerry in the last couple of games, how many of the Kerry players would have made that Mayo team? In the, in the last... In, in, in yes, the team that beat us? The team that beat us. The, no, the, I mean, you'd be looking at Paul Murphy probably on his performance in, in the two games, maybe Kieran, but other than that you'd be you'd be kind of scraping. <laughs> Is that begging the question then that not all players played up to their full ability no I don't think so I think the, the I think it was I think it was the system that beat us Tim I don't think it was the players I think the system beat us and we, we got into a hole that we couldn't get ourselves out of the weekend um, getting back to your point are we going to win in all Ireland next year I don't see us winning in all Ireland next year but I do think we'll stop the dubs from winning five in a row so I can do our figures in that now I'll do my figures in <laughs> mathematics <laughs> uh, Jimmy Dean in you had some great one-liners tonight. Um, I'm asking you, you know your football. That's the reason you're here in the panel on Terrace Talk. You know, you have to have a serious CV to get on the Terrace Talk <laughs> panel. Um, well, more and all of them. Yeah. <laughs> oh! <laughs> if, our listeners didn't, if our listeners didn't hear that, Jimmy Dean has said he's more medals than all those guys to put together. Um, Jimmy, if we can get you to get involved... You, you, that was your statement tonight that you said that um, there will have to be changes. As in, you know, we need new players, we need freshness, we need uh, players with the ability and strength and condition has a huge part of it. Can it be quick fix? Can we win in All Ireland in 2018? Uh, we can, of course. And uh, Kerry is, uh, is always very good to respond. And uh, when Kerry are at a low level, then usually they respond to that challenge. And I'm sure the players that were disappointed last Sunday are out there this evening. They're hurt. They're hurt. And uh, uh, there's nothing greater than hurt uh, to provide motivation. And uh, if they're real carry men, uh, then they will respond to this. And I think they'll respond to it very positively. Uh, we all respond, I suppose, to criticism in a very positive way. And I, I think they will. And uh, the... the really Kerry last Sunday morning I, drove, I was meeting somebody here in Tralee and I drove through it and you could feel uh, the despondency uh, there was a gloom over somebody the Somebody passed away. Yeah it was it yeah. was like yeah and that's that in the family and, and that's what makes Kerry football and I was up in, in the Hogan stand last Saturday and there was a young lad and he was crying he was irreconsolable and even though that very nice Florida girl was in the vicinity whose grandfather was a great Kerry supporter and um, that's why she was in the Hogan stand. She tried to console him and no way. Like the fact that Kerry had lost, it meant so much to him and he was only six or seven. So that is, I suppose, the nature of Kerry football and it's from that kind of how serious we take it that we will respond we uh, and that we are, nobody would want to meet Kerry next year in the final stages of the championship. If they were picking a team now, Say, who would you like to play in the semi final? I bet you very Definitely few would say Kerry. 
we'll yeah. bring the Super 8 next year now so that'll rattle things up a bit as well we'll have more games mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. the young so fellas will be able to yeah the super, that's, that's all for next year um, I want to thank you guys uh, Liam Brosnan right throughout the championship you haven't gone away there's county championships come up as well so we'll be pulling you in uh, Liam Brosnan you've been brilliant right throughout the championship and the National League likewise you uh, John Kennedy how are Steve going by the way going okay Tim. <laughs> going okay this man is still in management never 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 runs away from it runs to it Dini Long likewise your honest assessment it's um Great to have a Corkman amongst Kerry folk. Sure, you're one of our own now. We've adopted you. Likewise, um, Jimmy Dean, and you've been absolutely brilliant and uh, very popular with our people and our texters out there. And I want to thank our thousands of viewers tonight on Facebook. Again, I'm caught for time as far as reading all your comments. Thanks a million. And this is something, a new initiative we tried last week. We didn't think we'd be chatting after a defeat, but that's the joys of sport. You win some, you lose some, and hopefully... Uh, Mr Hicks and our producer will leave us do this again and to all our radio listeners Terrace Talk is an amazing programme and I'm very fortunate to be at the moment in Wishy's hot seat um, I think hopefully it'll bring the best out in all of us and for all the comments and likes on the Facebook page as well and uh, until next time actually I better say thanks to our cameraman we had a new cameraman in tonight uh, Matthew Green thank you Matthew and uh, likewise Eamon Hickson he's high tech he's producer of Terrace Talk this guy is going to the top. <laughs> and uh, until next time, uh, this is Tim Moynihan saying goodbye.